Hey guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's go see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. We got another one here from uh, Will. We've been doing a bunch of Will's beers. He sent me a bunch of canned beers and he knows I'm a hop head so he sent me a, a bunch of IPAs and a hoppy uh, uh, pail that we did yesterday. Uh, and these beers, some of these beers are, are, are a couple of months old so I want to get them out of the way before they get too old. And like I told you the other day, uh, uh, I'm trying to get to these little ABV beers like the pale we did yesterday and some of these IPAs and then we're going to get to the double IPAs and try to get some of those out of the way uh, uh, as, as soon as I can. Uh, I had uh, uh, several people send me some beers uh, all within the same couple of weeks and, and uh, just trying to get to all of them in a timely manner sometimes becomes a, a problem. And, uh, uh, it's a good problem to have as far as I'm concerned, and I do enjoy getting those beer mails. So thanks to everybody that, that sends those to me. I do appreciate it. Uh, this is Psychopathy, and it is an IPA, and it's done by Mad Tree Brewery, and they are in Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, it's got a tree on this side with leaves and stuff on it, and uh, on the back side... It's got mad tree and it's got a tree with no leaves on it. So, and that the tree with no leaves is very appropriate for this time of the year. Uh, this says the subtle malt backbone combats the bitterness and intensity of floral, grassy, and citrus hop flavors. However, taste is perception. Watch your slant. And that's the same thing that the commercial description here says about it. So, we won't have to read that. And 6.9% uh, alcohol by volume listed here. It doesn't have the IBUs on the can. And on the bottom it says 12-4-2014. So this was this is about two months old. And, so, and, and we want to try to get to those beers. They're, 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 these IPAs are... The fresher they are, the better they are, in my opinion. Once you start getting them to three months old, they've already start, they've already lost some of their hoppiness. So that's the reason the, you're, we're doing a bunch of IPAs and hoppy pails in a row here, guys. So uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. Let's go over to the food pairings. It's going to be your typical IPA food pairings, curried in the ties, the cuisine, and that's just a suggestion. I tell you this all the time. It goes well with just about anything. Uh, the cheeses, the peppery, Monterey, pepper jack, sharp, blue, cheddar, the more pungent cheeses, gorgonzola, limburger, and the meat is poultry, fish, shellfish, and salmon, and I will add grilled meat to that. Glass jars, a pint, becker, the nonic, tumbler, mug, stein, and side ale. I got my favorite glass here that my buddy Paris sent me. This is the Sauvin glass, S-A-U-V-I-N. Uh, the beer is not recommended for extended cellaring, so... Let's pop the top on this thing and get it in the glass and see what we got going on. Alright, 12 ounce can. Will, thanks a bunch brother for sending me those beers. You know I'm a hop head and I do enjoy a nice tasty hoppy IPA. All right, with that pour, about a finger of head, very orange, tangerine in color, and it is uh, fairly cloudy. I cannot see the bulb through it. I can see light coming through it, but I cannot see the bulb. So this may be an unfiltered beer. I don't see a whole lot of particulates in it or any kind of junk in the trunk, but it is kind of cloudy. Let's get a nose on it see what we got. A nice citrusy, grapefruity smell. 
I can, you know, s smell it's got a nice maltiness to it too. And that's just going to intensify. The older this beer gets, the more that maltiness is going to come out and the less hot presence you're going to get. And any of you guys that drink IPAs know that for a fact. That's why when we see an IPA that's on the shelf at six months or, or older, you leave it sitting on the damn shelf. Let's, let, let it sit there until the cows come home as far as I'm concerned. The people that run these beer stores, I, I know they have money invested in that, but once it starts getting to the three month date, they need to mark those beers down to get them out off the shelf. Uh, you go into a beer store and they've got an IPA that's been sitting there for a year, you need to find a new beer store. That's the way I think about it. Well, that smells pretty good, so let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Will. This one's definitely, definitely not blowing my hair back on this one. It's got an astringent taste to it to me. A little bit of citriness there and a little bit of grapefruitiness in there, but not overbearing or not overwhelming. Sort of a, a lemony taste on the back end. Definitely got some bitterness going on with it, so uh, I don't know what the IBUs are. Let's see if anybody here says. Nope, it's not written on there either, and it's not on the can, so I would, I would think, just guessing, that the IBUs on this is probably in the 60s or 70s. Yeah. It's okay. It's definitely not blowing my hair back and my socks off. Definitely about tastier IPAs out there than this one. But it's right out of the fridge. Let me take it back and let her sip on it just a time or two. And then uh, I'll sip on it for a time or two or three. And we'll come back and uh, see where we end up up on this one. All right, guys. I'm back. Got just a little up here. It's left a very nice lacing on the glass. But it's just not a balanced beer to me. Uh, uh, it's got a, a little bit of an astringent taste to me. It's just not... It's not, it's not doing it. Uh, it's uh, a little bit of citrusiness in there and a little bit of grapefruitiness in there. And that's basically all I'm getting. Uh, a little maltiness in there. I don't know if uh, being two months old, it, it has affected the, uh, the life of this beer or if it's supposed to taste like this fresh. But not super impressed with it right now. So let's do the final chug here. It's not bad. I mean, it's definitely above average beer, but... I don't think it's into the A category. Definitely on the bitter side. I know it's an IPA, but there's not enough sweetness on the front end to balance out that bitterness. And you can have, I mean, depending on how it's brewed, you can have an overly sweet beer or you can have an overly bitter beer depending on, you know, what kind of bittering hops you're using, how much of those you're using, and, and, and all that. There's a whole lot of things come to got to come together to make a nice balanced IPA. And I don't think this is quite there. So, guys, uh, I'm going to give this a, uh, I'm going to give this a 6, which is a B. Uh, it's got the date on the can. If it didn't have the date on the can, it'd probably be a B-. minus. But it's got the date on the can, and it's got the alcohol got content, the ABV written on the can. Don't have the IBUs, but two out of three, I don't guess, is too bad. That's the two main ingredients, the uh, uh, information in, uh, we need on the cans and bottles, uh, the ABV and the date. So, with that being said, I'm giving it the, uh, the B, so let's see what everybody else thinks. Let's go over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 89, uh, in a very good range. I think... Uh, I don't, if I was spending a numeric rating on this, it would probably be an 84 or an 85. So they're giving it a little bit better grade than I am, which is usually the other way around. Uh, and over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer says overall 88 and 77 in the style. So their numbers are a little better than what I'm giving it as far as the overall grading. Uh, yeah, about an 84 or 85 is what I'm giving this. 
So if you've had this one from Mad Tree, their Psychopathy, which is an IPA, uh, let me know what you think of it, guys, and let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See you then.